Event for Built to Last, brought to you by Jimmy Birchfield's Classic Entertainment and Sports here at the Twin River Event Center in Lincoln, Rhode Island. I'm Pat Sullivan, my broadcast partner, Mike Parenti, bringing this action here. The main event between Vladimir Biasi and the Yellow Trunks with the red gloves against Michael Flash Walchuk and the black and white trunks and the black gloves. Walchuk coming from Ontario, Canada, 9-5-2 with two knockouts, Mr. Providence, Obviously from Providence, Rhode Island, born in Cape Verde. 13-1-1 with six knockouts. He's won two fights in a, in a row, including probably his most dominant performance to date. Came about two months ago, and he beat 26-2 Joe Spina here in a unanimous decision where he won just about every round. He also had an impressive unanimous decision victory over George Armenta. Also here at the Twin River Event Center, you see Vladin picking up right where he left off against Joe Spina here, now against Flash Walchuk. Well, that's one of the first things I wanted to see, Pat, is if he come out with that same intensity. Obviously, this fight on a local level, not quite as monumental as fighting Joey Spina, and sometimes a fighter can suffer a letdown or may play or fight down to the level of his competition. But in this case, Michael Walchuk coming in on 10 days notice, a lot of credit to him for being willing to take the fight. Promise that he's not coming here to get trampled like some opponents do. And for Vladimir Biasi, the key is just to stay on top of your game and fight this fight as if it were a world title fight. And so far, so good through the first half of the opening round. Vladimir, as I mentioned, won two fights in a row. Previously to that, he had a draw here against John Mackey. Previous to that, he had a knockout loss to Denis Grachev. For that, Mike. April 2011 was Vladin's last knockout victory. That was against Tim Connors on ESPN, the opening bout. It's been a while since Vladin's felt a knockout victory inside the ring, so we'll see if maybe he's feeling that tonight. His opponent, Flash Walchuk, 9-5 and five with only two knockouts. He hasn't had a knockout since 2009. A lot of that comes with stepping up the level of competition. The, the tougher the fight, the harder it is to get an opponent out of there. And, Certainly, uh, Vladimir Biasi has climbed the ladder rather quickly in his career. Only 15 pro fights under his belt, and he's been on ESPN twice in front of 90 million homes worldwide. So the, the ladder, you know, he hasn't really taken that slow, methodical step. He's really jumped over some steps along the way. And when you step up at times, it's going to be much tougher to score knockouts. These guys aren't coming here to get knocked out. Vladimir started his career 11-0. Michael Walchuk started his career 6-0. really low in his stance tonight. It's a good first round. He came out with a lot of energy, really didn't waste any time. Not the typical feeling out round as sometimes you see when you don't really know much about the opponent. And clearly he comes into this fight not knowing nearly as much about Mike Walchuk as he knew about Joey Spina. And yet he still looks sharp and it appears they have the perfect game plan. That was one of the keys last time was the game plan by Orlando Valls, his head trainer, and Super Ray Oliveira, who was working his corner for that fight. Okay, Sean Crowley's telling Flash Walchuk here in the corner. Just stay relaxed. Get your nose out the line. Okay, for round number two, scheduled eight rounds here in the main event. Vladimir Biasi, the New England super middleweight champion. Michael Walchuk coming from Ontario, Canada. Short notice to come and fight the hometown hero, Vladimir Biasi, nicknamed Mr. Providence. Hey, if Vladimir keeps up the style, when every time a punch is thrown by Walchuk, he gets so low, that's really going to start to frustrate Walchuk, and that's maybe where he may start to get in some trouble by throwing some shots in the back of his head, or maybe some even lower shots. 
In all seriousness, too, his trunks are rather high. I mean, he's got that belt part over where the midsection would be. And if you're Mike Walchuk and you land a midsection or a body blow, you may actually get called for being right on the waistline, which isn't the case. You hear the crowd getting into it because Vladine just landed a few nice punches there in the grill of Flash Walchuk. And now you see Walchuk dancing around here, trying to regain his composure a little bit. And Vladine just stalking him right over to the ropes. Vadim doing a good job of working the body here against Walchuk. Comes back with an uppercut. Walchuk does a good job of blocking it. One thing Walchuk does well is cover up. When he gets into that crouch, it's hard to penetrate his defense. However, at the same time, when he's doing that, he's not active at all. And Vadim Biasi is coming out and obviously the more active player through the first round and a half. Hasn't won since 2010. Trying to come in here and spoil this Thursday night fight series for Vladin, who's had so much success thus far. And this is the third installment of the Thursday night fight series by Jimmy Birchfield in classic entertainment and sports. See, Vladin just continues to throw punches while Walchuk covers up there on the ropes, now into the corner. right there, Mike, it's almost awkward for Walchuk to do anything when Vladin's head is literally in the stomach of Walchuk. I mean, he's covering up so low that there's really, you can't punch from that. You, like your uppercut, you, you're never going to connect on a shot like that. Yeah, it's very similar to the way he fought John Mackey, the difference being that Mackey was a lot more awkward to deal with, Walchuk a lot more of an orthodox fighter, so he's leaving himself open for some shots. And when Vladin is coming at you, throwing as much and, and as often as he is, it's hard for Walsh to do anything. Final seconds of round number two in this main event. And there, round number two of a scheduled eight between Mr. Providence and Flash Walchuk. Go check out here with Eddie Trainer, Alain Nobel, Dr. Tano Body. I would like to thank you all for your support in making tonight's event possible. Please visit our website. Well, you're doing some time, you're dropping under your wing too long. For more information on our upcoming schedule, man, fighters, Listen, don't news, worry about his fucking photos and more. When he's moving his head, don't go for his fucking head. When he goes down, hit him in the fucking body. In box. He turns here, hit him here. He turns this way, hit him here. Just keep cutting to the fucking body until you get the head. Don't worry about the head. Right here. Stay off the ropes. Stay off the ropes, okay? Now, man, when this motherfucker's come straight at you, man, drop down. Don't be standing up here leaning in. Drop down. Drop right into him, baby, and work inside. Okay? Yes, sir. You got something to say, Ray? No. My body's working on him. It's hurting. So keep yeah. on. All right? Take your time and keep on that body. Remember the double left hook and then come back to the right. Double left hook. I'll tell you, like, after that fight with. Joe Spinney, you and I walked around here saying that Orlando is probably the smartest person in the building with his game plan against Joe Spina. And he's giving Vladimir some pretty sound advice and only in between the second and third round, telling him you're dropping, you're dropping a little too low, don't get caught up against the ropes where Vladimir is right now, and then just keep coming at him and go right at his face. It's yeah. pretty good advice there by Orlando. He's quickly becoming a very solid trainer on the New England scene. No, he's great. He does a great job, and he's especially great at crafting game plans, but and more so in the last few fights of being able to adjust on the fly. That's really the important thing for any trainer to be able to do, because you can have a game plan, and that could go out the window after one round, but Orlando Valls is able to actually take that game plan and build off it and reconstruct and sort of adjust along the way, and that's key when you face somebody that you really haven't seen before. You have no idea what Michael Walchuk's gonna do until that bell rings, and now that they've had two rounds to feel him out, you may see Biasi be a little bit more active, maybe more effective. You actually just heard Orlando giving Vladine instructions, and Vladine just talked back, yes, sir. So they're actually communicating during the fight, which is pretty impressive. Minute and 45 seconds to go here in round number three. Vladimir Biasi controlling the pace of this fight, but Walchuk doing a pretty good job of not getting damaged by many of these fights. He's been able to block a lot of them, putting his hands up on either side of his face. He's been able to block a lot of the punches, and Vladimir really hasn't been able to get through. 
It's tough. Waltrucks done a nice job defending himself, but eventually his arm's going to get tired from taking so much punishment. And when that guard does drop, that's when you have the opportunity. And again, it goes back to kind of our theme of the night of setting up knockouts. Again, Vladimir hasn't had a knockout since April of 2011. Sorts of combinations. That's another thing you'll learn about Beyonce if you keep watching him fight over and over. His conditioning is, is above any opponent that he's going to go in there against. He just has such great stamina and he can punch until the bell goes off. This is an eight round fight. He could do 10 rounds if he had to, condition wise. Well, absolutely. Stamina is never a problem. It's never really been a problem for him in his fights. Maybe with the lone exception being the loss to Grashev. That was more or less an issue of just leaving himself open for shots, not more so stamina. And Grotch is now the NABF champion in the light heavyweight division. So not even the super middleweight division where Vladimir fights, a heavier division. That was, that was a tough fight for Vladimir. Yeah, it's impressive. When you saw Grotch's power at 168 and then see him go up seven more pounds, you can only imagine what kind of strength he brings to the table now. Carolano Bells asking Vladimir if he's starting to have fun. Now listen to Sean Farley at the corner of Flash Walchuk. You caught him with the short right uppercut when he dropped to his left that he felt. Believe me when I tell you, I don't lie. When he drops down here to his left low, roll that right uppercut okay. and keep putting that right hand to that solar plex right here, okay? And keep letting him waste energy. Just punch himself up. No, no, no. You just relax and have fun. You're smiling, so we're having fun. Yes, sir. Sean Farley telling Flash Walchuk there that if he's going to keep bending down like that, you've got to get him with the uppercut. It's pretty good advice because that's really the only way you're going to be able to combat what Vladimir's been doing by getting down slow. You're going to have to make it so he doesn't want to go down low like that. And the only way to do that is with an uppercut. Exactly. You've got to make him pay the price for doing it. And if you don't do that, he's going to continue to do what's worked for him and what's been effective through these first three rounds. Walchuk almost stumbling as he throws, putting a lot of force behind those punches. Vladi continues to fire off combinations here. Walchuk now seems to be covering up a, a lot more than he was in the previous round. You're going to wonder if maybe his stamina taking the fight on short notice may have something to do with it here in the later rounds of this fight. Yeah, I would certainly think, even if he's been in the gym, it's different than actually training for a fight. So possibly by the fifth, maybe sixth round, you may see that stamina become an issue if the fight actually gets that far. I think clearly with somebody who's been in camp for more than a month, Biossi would obviously have the edge in that department. Go here in round number four. See, buddy, trying to get through that defense, and Walchek just smiling. Nice move there by Biasi. You switched up stances and hit him with an uppercut. That was pretty impressive. A sidestep and then just delivered a left uppercut. Wall Chuck never saw it coming. Final 30 seconds of round number four. Mr. Providence trying to make sure the throne of Rhode Island. 
stays with Mr. Providence and is to give it up to an Ontario Canada native. Goes in seconds here. Fighters continue to trade blows in the center of the ring. And then you see right there, Vadim gets low. And Waltuck's trying to go with that uppercut, but it's almost like Vadim's almost too low. You can't get enough leverage to get that uppercut. He would really have to come up off the canvas in order to do so. You are in good fucking shape. Don't let any of your mind tell you different. I'm not done. Okay. All I ask for you to do is get the ice back. My mom, my mom. Right hook. Yeah. Left hook is picking him up. All right. Left hook. Come on, baby. Left uppercut is picking him up. So throw that right hook. Left uppercut. Left uppercut. Left uppercut. Left uppercut. Here we go. Round number five of the schedule of eight. You hear the Suka Ray Oliveira saying left uppercut. It's obviously the combination they want Vadim to work with here. Rondo Valls reminds me a bit of Ann Wolf. Very animated, but he gets his point across in the corner. It's a lot of fun to listen to. Crowd getting into it here. Trying to urge Mr. Providence to get his opponent out here early. Former Dean College and University of Rhode Island. Football player, Vadim Biasi, now a professional boxer in his 15th pro fight, 13 wins, seven knockouts. I think the theme here has just been that Biasi's outworked Walchuk. There hasn't been a ton of damage done on either side, but Biasi's the more active fighter, and that's always going to be the favorite of the judges at the end of the day if it does go down to that if it gets to the scorecards. And in fights like this, there's not a lot of power punches, there's no knockdowns. Certainly the guy who's more active, the guy who doesn't back up is going to be the one who more than likely is going to win the decision. And Biasi has clearly dictated the pace of the fight from the opening bell. Which is what you would expect from somebody on his home turf being in the main event. Center up on their feet, urging Mr. Providence to take this one home here in the fifth. Walchuk doing a good job of escaping any danger. Looked to have been shaken up for a few seconds there. Now regain his composure. He also better be careful he doesn't try to punch himself out here. That was a good job of Walchuk to be able to survive the end of that round. Yeah, Walchuk walked into one. Vladin sidestepped and Vladin caught him with the left. He caught him flush too. And you can tell because Walchuk went into defense mode the rest of that round. He just covered up and tried not to get hit, tried to try to press the action. I'm okay. No, no, that's why. I want to stop the fight. I don't want you to get beat on. Okay. Those are the things I stopped the fight here, Pat. Stand up. That's it, it's over. Stand up, you big Don't apologize for the thing. And you heard the corner there. 
fight's over. The round clock is over. I, I don't want you to get hurt. I'm going to stop this fight. I don't think Class Walchuk wants to stop the fight. That's enough. That's enough. Nothing to apologize. Don't you, don't you apologize. Okay, don't you dare apologize. You fought your heart out. How many of you fought your heart out? Vladimir improves to 14, 1 and 1 with 7 knockouts. He takes this one home and continues his dominance here at Twin River Casino. The New England Super Middleweight Champ does it again. A very impressive performance. And Buddy literally continues to get better with every fight. And a great win against George Armenta to get him back on the winning track in early 2012. Then had a Tremendous unanimous decision over the KO kid Joey Spina two months ago. And now, a very solid win against Flash Michael Walchuk from Canada. Really dominated the fight from beginning to end. He had better power punches. He controlled the center of the ring. And you see the sportsmanship of Vladimir right there thanking Walchuk for coming down from Canada to accept the fight here. Certainly did it on short notice. And hats off to Walter. He was a very game opponent. I think it was just that Vladin's style and the way that he defended those punches really frustrated Walter. And there's really not much he could have done here. Here we go to Bill Carpenter for the time of the official knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, at the conclusion of five rounds of boxing, the boat comes to a halt. Your winner by TKO, Mr. Providence. Vladini, be your